Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'd like to present a manifesto at this conference on uh, what I'm seeing as a truly African invention, that being uh, flexible mobility developed by Africans using the African context. So mobility doesn't have to be hard. It's essentially we speak about space, time, and fuel, or resources, burning of resources. Transport and mobility is deeply local, the, the local context, but it's also uniquely global. And I'll illustrate this through the, the following five problems. And you'll be able to identify these five problems wherever you live in the world. Problem one is the undesirable private car usage that then eats up land and the parking, the uh, mobility storage devices called parking garages that we need to uh, prop up our uh, car habit. Problem two is that these cars are single occupants and the price of resource of, of running these uh, vehicles is, is only increasing. Um, and we can only imagine what the licensing costs of self-driving technologies are going to be when these proprietary systems land on our shores. Problem three is that demand is not responded to, even though a city has uh, sometimes a vast oversupply of transport. It's just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Example here is uh, in Cape Town, where our rail system is uh, running very short of rolling stock. However, we have a very vibrant uh, paratransit system. I think that picture's of Kampala, um, where the demand and the supply systems just aren't talking to each other. We have enough transport in Africa. It's just very badly distributed. Then we look at the skills and funding needed to implement much needed mass transit, and I use uh, from the newspaper these graphics, where uh, the red lines is the what we would call consider mass transit, formalized and uh, uh, organized to move as many people as fast as possible. And there are tiny little lines when you look at Addis, uh, Dar, Cape Town. We don't have the skills, the funding, and the capacity to implement and operate these systems. The blue line, of course, is what props, pops up in the absence of mass transit. And so what we do know in Africa is how to move people, perhaps uh, informally but popularly. Problem five then, of course, is uh, that our users are vulnerable. Our women are harassed on a daily basis. The uh, criminal element that comes where there's cash without uh, accountability and the laundering and the trade that can go on. This is a uh, ta minibus taxi in South Africa with 255 bullet holes pumped into it. Um, you, you, I don't think this is a root dispute. This is an uh, uh, element of criminality which needs to be addressed. Uh, the occupants of this were all uh, taxi bosses on the way back from a funeral of their colleague. Um, and so the, the, the law and order, the crime and violence that uh, comes with the system really needs to be uh, highlighted. So how can African cities transition? and play with, out with popular transit at its center. Well, technology does have a, a role to play here. And so we've developed a model called flexible mobility, or a flexible mobility platform, which I'd like to just uh, talk you through. So if we pivot on the problems, those five problems, private car usage, single occupant car usage, demand and supply not matched, all these uh, problems that are familiar to your city, well, what if we set these objectives? We want to limit private car usage. We want to accelerate shared and electric mobility. We want to build responsive systems to demand that highlights active mobility and encourages responsible supply. Mass transit systems with sustainable funding and protect our users by means of aggressive regulation, aggressive enforcement, building the platform we need. Now, these are all noble objectives. How do we accomplish that? Well, we've built a three-step process. So we first want to measure exactly what's going on, respect the indigenous transport supply that knows where supply and demand is, understand those temporal patterns, those unique temporal patterns, and identify where infrastructure is. So collect as much data and put that data in a centralized place for everyone to, to share. Then model, understand what is the end state we want, well, where are the missing linkages? What nodes are not served adequately? What is the optimal supply? We, 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 do, we know we have an oversupply uh, of transport in Africa. What is the optimal supply? What is the new business model that's possible to incorporate informality into the formal economy? And what is a clear and just operating contract? And then how do we manage this system? And this is where technology really has a role to play in tracking, in payments, and in measurement. And so we've developed a three-part tool at Flex, which is a driver app and a rider app and a rideshare engine, which allows us to take the big black box that is a, a rideshare technology and open that up. And so the question we ask is, can we measure, model, and manage our cities with flexible mobility being a uniquely African invention developed uh, by uh, my company, Go Metro in Cape Town, but using the African context? And so it's time to open up the black box of technology and give cities the power of flexible mobility. Thank you very much. Thank you.